Hi my dear friends, today we will discuss the second part of uh, our presentation about ocular tumors. I hope you will enjoy my presentation. Conjectival tumors. Bromyconal tumors are very rare, so tumors of the cornea mainly are extensions from the conjunctival tumors. Any conjunctival cell type can potentially lead to one or more of the conjunctival tumors. The majority of conjunctival tumors are benign. Malignant tumors of the conjunctiva are relatively rare. Conjunctival epithelial tumors, including melanocytic tumors, are more common than conjunctival stromal tumors. Some uh, scientific terms which are important to understand uh, our topic. The first is dysplasia. Dysplasia is a mitosis occurring in a disordered fashion in a supra-basilar epithelial cells. It is full thickness of serial cell layer are dysplastic. It is known as carcinoma in situ. In this photo, we can notice that the cells are arranged in normal pattern, while here the cells show mitosis with disordered fashion, which is called dysplasia. If the full thickness of the epithelium involved by this dysplastic cells is called carcinoma in situ, and if these cells cause breaking if the, of the of basement membrane of the epithelial cells, they cause malignancy and then they will cause metastasis. The second scientific term is acanthotic. Acanthotic means second epithelium, like this photo. We can notice that the epithelium here is so thickened. The third term, which is important to us, is leukoblakia, which is a keratin formed on mucosal surface in the form of white plaques, like this photo. Conjunctival tumor classification it can include benign tumors, including nevus, papilloma, epibarbar dermoid, and lipotermoid. White B malignant lesions include primary acquired melanosis and intraepithelial neuroblasia or what's called carcinoma in situ. Malignant conjunctival tumor including melanoma, squamous cell carcinoma, Kaposi sarcoma, and lymphoma. Classification of abdominal tumors of the conjunctiva including non melanocytic benign, including squamous mobiloma, like this photo. Keratotic plaque, or what is called uh, actinic keratotic, which is believed due to prolonged ultraviolet ray exposure and can be listed as a pre malignant lesion, like this photo. Reactive hyperplasia or pseudoopsimutous hyperplasia, which is active uh, hyperplastic conjunctival epithelium. Non melanocytic pre malignant and malignant lesions, like actinic keratosis conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasia or what's called CIN like this photo. Now we can discuss uh, every uh, tumor of them in uh, separate uh, like nevus as here it is present in the first two decades of life. It is sharply demarcated and slightly elevated lesion most frequently just a limber besides the limbus and 30% of cases are non-pigmented. Papilloma. It is presented by a lesion which is a pedunculated or sessile. They are usually present in the childhood or early adulthood. It caused by infection with human papilloma virus, maybe multiple and bilateral. In the sessile lesion, mostly it is presented in the middle aged and not caused by infection and single and unilateral. This is the pedunculated form, while here is the sessile form. Epibulbar dermoid. It is what's called limbal dermoid or dermolipoma. It is present in childhood, smooth, soft mass, just a limbal, occasionally occurring in cases of golden heart syndrome. Lipodermoid. Lipodermoid, it is present in the adulthood, soft, movable subconjunctival mass, uh, most frequently uh, present at the outer cancers. Intraepithelial neoplasia, or what is called uh, carcinoma in situ, they present in late adulthood, just a limbal fleshy avascular mass. It may be become avascular and extend to the cornea. Malignant transformation is uncommon. The main treatment here is excision with mitomycin application. Uh, the excision should be with safety margin. Squamous cell 
carcinoma which is the progression of the carcinoma in situ. Primary acquired melanosis, it is a some sort of ocular pigmentation. Primary acquired melanosis, it is some sort of conjunctival uh, hyperpigmentation. It is uh, presented in late adulthood, unilateral regular areas of flat brown pigmentation may involve any part of the conjunctiva. Primary acquired melanosis without atypia is a benign lesion, while primary acquired melanosis with atypia is a very malignant lesion. Conjunctival melanoma. It can arise from primary acquired melanosis with atypia, which is the most common type with sudden appearance of an attitude in primary acquired melanosis. From anivus, here it is a very rare and uh, characterized by sudden increase in size of the pigmentation. And primary, it is a solitary nodule and usually just a limbal and maybe anywhere. It can be uh, here, uh, this mass, uh, we can judge whether it arises from the conjunctiva or from underlying ocular tissue uh, like ciliary body, for example. Treatment of conjunctival melanoma, if the tumor is localized, we can remove it by excision and adjunctive uh, cryotherapy. In cases of diffuse tumor, excision of the nodules and adjunctive uh, cryotherapy or application of mitomycin C. In cases of orbital recurrence, treat by excision and radiotherapy or excentration. Squamous cell carcinoma, it arises from intra-epithelial neoplasia de novo, present in late adulthood and frequently just a limbal. Progression, it is a slowly growing tumor, may spread extensively and rarely metastasizes. Caput sarcoma, it affects patients with HIV. It is vascular, slowly growing tumor of low malignancy. The tumor is very sensitive to radiotherapy and most frequently in the inferior fornix. Lymphoma, usually present in adulthood, benign or malignant, it is salmon colored and characterized by subconjunctival infiltrates. Intraocular tumors. Intraocular tumors can include uveal tumors, which arises from iris, ciliary body, and choroidal melanoma, retinal tumors, including retroblastoma and metastatic tumors. Uveal tract tumor, including the iris, which can show nevi, which is a benign, flat to slightly elevated lesions, or melanoma, which is a malignant tumor and represent 5 to 10 percent of uveal melanoma. The age of presentation from 50 to 60 years, elevated and more pigmented lesion treatment mainly by local decision plus minus radiotherapy with good prognosis. This photo of uh, iris nevus, like here, while here is a very melanoma with extensive, extensive pigmented lesion involving a sector of the iris. Ciliary body melanoma. It is 10% uh, percent, percent, uh, of cases of uveal melanoma only visualized when the pupil is widely dilated. Presentation depends on the size and the location. Can associate subluxation or localized lens or bacentinal vessels, erosions of the anterior chamber uh, with posterior extension and causing retinal detachment. Ultrasound here is very essential, treated by inoculation, local resection, and radiotherapy. Prognosis is poor as usual presentation is usually late. Ciliary body melanoma, in this photo we can notice that there is a mass arising from the ciliary body and causing pushing of the lens and displacement of the lens. Choroidal melanoma, it is 85% of the uveal melanoma, most common during the six decades of life. Raised pigmented oval shaped mass, occasionally Amenonotic, commonly asymptomatic, found in routine fundus examination, may cause decreased visual acuity or defect in visual field, can cause exudative retinal detachment, secondary coma, cataract, and uveitis. Choroidal melanoma may be peripheral, like this photo, and be a subretinal lesion, or be, be at the macula, and here uh, be below the macula and subretinal in nature. Diagnosis of choroidal melanoma by first by ocular ultrasound 
we which can diagnose the mass with overlying uh, retinal detachment. MRI of the orbit also shows the tumor and uh, check if there is extraocular spread to the optic nerve. Fluorescein angiography show increased vascularity and leakage from the tumor with subretinal lesion. The French diagnosis of choroidomelanoma it includes retinal detachment, metastasis, new vascular age-related macular degeneration and large choroidal nevus. Medical evaluation of these patients include we should exclude metastasis from any part of the body like the lung and breast. Metastatic workup should be done in the form of chest x-ray, abdominal ultrasonic MRI and mammography. We also should uh, evaluate if there is extension or metastasis from choroidal melanoma to different parts of the body like the liver and the lung. Management of choroidal melanoma, we should consider visual acuity of the involved eye, size, location, extent, and apparent activity of the involved eye. The state of the volo eye is very important in our management, general health, and age of the patient. Treatment of choroidal melanoma, it includes radioactive plaque, which is a metal plaque. Uh, containing uh, the radioactive material and suture to the site of the tumor, inoculation, cyclotron generated charged particle radiation, photocoagulation, transcribability thermotherapy, localized resection of the tumor, and extenuation of the totally of the uh, globe and orbital tissue, and uh, palliation with chemotherapy. Another important intraocular tumor uh, is the retinoblastoma. It is a tumor of primitive photoreceptor cells of the eye. This is the most common primary malignant intraocular tumor in the childhood. It occurs okay as one in every 20,000 life persons. Retinoblastoma. Average age of the presentation is 18 months. Majority diagnosed by three years of age. Early treatment can save vision and the life of the patient. Other primary tumors such as sarcoma may develop in about 10% of cases. There are two forms of disease which is heritable form and non heritable form. Retroblastoma main presentation by leukocorea or whitish pupil, while uh, another presentation is a squint of the affected eye. The facial diagnosis. The facial diagnosis is causes of leukocoria in children, like first like persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, which is called BHPV. It caused by failure of embryological primary vitreous and hyaluronic vasculature to a guest, developing cataract with whitening of the pupil, like in this photo. Uh, the second uh, the facial diagnosis is Coats disease, which is a unilateral disease characterized by uh, development of uh, blood vessels behind the retina with retinal detachment causing picture resembling retinoblastoma. Toxocala canis, it is an infect infectious disease of the eye associated with infected puppies. It is transmitted from dogs to human causing retinal detachment like this photo and uh, lastly retinopathy of B maturity which occurs in low persuaded infant who receive supplemental oxygen in period immediately after birth leading to retinal vascularization and retinal detachment like this photo would characteristic retinal detachment and retinal vascularization retinal in big fundus picture we can show pink white raised lesion with blood vessels on the surface can we can show also calcification especially in ultrasound or can we can see retinal detachment microscopic pictures undifferentiated element and be a collections of small rounded cells differentiated forms include flexner venesteiner roses like this photo or homerite roses like this photo or fluids from photoreceptor differentiation like this photo. Retroblastoma, one third of cases are bilateral and present area than unilateral tumors. The bilateral tumor is the mostly heritable form, they are familial and autosomal dominant. Only 6% of patients have a positive family history. Patients with familial retroblastoma have a 50% risk of transmitting the disease to their children.
a sporadic case is usually uniocular but can be bilateral. Uterostoma can spread transclearly to the orbit via the optic nerve to the brain and via blood to bone marrow. Investigations are ultrasonography like this photo showing the tumor with calcification CT. We can see the tumor and the calcification and lastly by MRI which shows the tumor and extension to the optic nerve and to the brain. Treatment of retinoblastoma include inoculation or external beam radiotherapy, thermotherapy, cryotherapy like this photo and chemotherapy. Very important in retinoblastoma, any child under 5 years of age who has recent leukocoria squint of loss of vision must be examined thoroughly to rule out retinoblastoma. Metastatic tumors, it is more common than primary malignancies. The commonest primary site in women is the breast and in men is the bronchus. Less common sites, kidney tests and GIT. They may present with decreased visual acuity in one or both eyes, solitary or multiple creamy white placoid or over lesions in the fundus picture, treatment mainly by chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Metastatic tumors of the breast cancer here we can notice that there is lesion which is metastasis thank you very much and i hope you enjoy my presentation thank you